Portuguese media has been talking a lot about Arsenal and Victor Goyocares. We're going to discuss that. Plus some interest in a Nottingham Forest defender. What Arsenal are doing to try and tackle the issues surrounding the Bayern Munich Champions League home game. And not only that, but we've got some Nando sauce to discuss. This is the Arsenal News Show. Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Back again with you guys for another episode of what is the Arsenal News Show. Join you every single morning at 8 a.m. UK time. Thank you, as always, for joining me and making this a part of your morning routines. It is always incredibly appreciated. I hope you've had a really good start to your week. You've made it through Tuesday, which, as we all know, is the worst day of the week. So once you've made it through that, you can see the horizon. You can see the weekend. You can see what is hopefully going to be a fantastic weekend of football from the international scene and keep us tied over somewhat until Arsenal play again next weekend, uh, which, of course, is against Manchester City. But good morning to those joining us live in the chat box. I want to say, first of all, a massive thank you for helping us reach 55,000 subscribers on YouTube. It is incredibly humbling uh, to continue to see this community grow and improve and get so many more of you involved in it so thank you once again for that uh kai good morning to you to josh to red star to graham good morning uh to ismail and kaiser pikahu chris uh clincy stephen daniel a b mark we got steve we got the barney we got black shine and damien and arasilki rich uh jose glenn temi matt g mr Reed, martin bruce shari uh amira uh, who else have we got? James, Carl, Josh, Arthur, Tom, Adagoke, Barry. Thank you so much, all of you, as always, for tuning in. It is incredibly appreciated, and I hope that you have had, as I say, a really good start to your weeks. Please do drop a like on the video and help us on our way to 1K every single day. If you're listening on YouTube, thank you. If you're listening on Catch Up, thank you. If you're listening on our audio platforms, thank you. Really appreciate it everyone uh, that continues to make this the place that we love it to be. And one of those people is Harry Simu, who joined me, of course, yesterday for a special evening show. We're going to make this a bit of a regularity this week. With it being the international break, of course, there's plenty of time to kill. Uh, and me and Harry sat down yesterday to do a tier list of all the players that Arsenal have really been linked to so far this season ahead of that summer transfer window. So, yes, we talked about Victor Gorokarez, Victor Ozyman, Joshua Kimmich, Joshua Zerkzy. Lots of Joshes and Victors were talked about in this show. Um, as plenty more as well. So please make sure if you haven't listened to that already, go give that a listen. It is available for you on audio and video platforms as the last upload before this one. So I recommend you go and check that out if your morning needs some extra listening help. Uh, tonight, I'm very happy to say that I'll be joined, hopefully, um, by DG Deluded Guna. Uh, that show should be going out at 5 o'clock um, UK time. So 5 p.m. tonight, I'll be joined by DG for a good chat about something related to Arsenal. I need to decide upon a topic, um, but uh, we'll be having a chat with DG a little bit later on tonight. And then tomorrow as well, again, hopefully we'll be joined by Alex from the different knock uh, in the evening as well, probably around six o'clock tomorrow night. Five o'clock today, six o'clock tomorrow, plenty of content coming your way. So moving towards the news then, and Arsenal are taking decisions regarding their ticketing for the Bayern Munich Champions League tie. Now, we know that Bayern Munich are not able to have any of their fans inside the Arsenal Stadium because of them uh, being given a banning order uh, following a infringement of UEFA laws when they threw fireworks onto the pitch in their previous game. And so, therefore, uh, they have seen their fans banned from this, um, from this fixture. Arsenal will be filling the stadium, of course, in that section with our home fans, so there'll be more tickets available for Arsenal home fans, and they have put measures in place to try and prevent Bayern Munich fans from buying tickets. Now, members that were created after um, the 11th of March will not be able to buy tickets for this game. So any Bayern Munich fan that suddenly signs up to be an Arsenal member won't be able to use that membership to buy tickets. Neither will they be able to see tickets transferred to those tickets. Not only that, but also if any Bayern Munich fan is found inside the stadium, if their ticket is identified wherever they got that ticket from, whichever season, whichever membership, whichever account transferred a uh, who is discovered to be a Bayern Munich supporter inside the ground, that membership will be suspended indefinitely. So 
Arsenal are putting into place very strict measures to try and prevent any way of Bayern Munich fans from attending the game. Uh, if there are any that are attempting to do so and do manage to get inside, um, well, just I wouldn't celebrate any goals if I were you. That's all I would say. Uh, moving forwards and moving to Aaron Ramsdale. Aaron Rams has actually been doing some really good discussions regarding, um, obviously, the international break. We often get a lot of players come out and do some some media. And he's been talking specifically about kind of his relationship with uh, Raya. And he's been talking about the situation where people have had a lot of opinions about this. He says, obviously, fans have their favourites. But personally, I think they've shown huge respect to both goalkeepers. They've supported whoever plays. And I think that shows great unity. What they do for the team in general is outstanding. And I think it's just great to hear, you know, what Aaron Ramsdale is, uh, is, is, is kind of how where he is. We heard those quotes from his, his father last year, of course, where he said he'd lost his smile. He clearly wasn't in a very good place. And, you know, he played in that game against Brentford, which we won, and he made some really big saves in that game. It's worth remembering. David Rea has come in and done really, really well, has taken that spot, made it his own, and probably will be the Arsenal goalkeeper into the indefinite future as Ramsdale's future remains very uncertain. But it's great to hear him talking about the fans in such a way that there is obviously favourites, that fans do have players they prefer over others. But the fact that there is so much support for both keepers overall, and that the fans have been fantastic this season with both of them is is really, really, really good. Um, now, moving to Sammy Mottbell's piece regarding Nottingham Forest, it is said that Arsenal are monitoring Murillo, uh, who is a Brazilian defender uh, and a player who has done really, really well this season for Forest, despite their struggles at the bottom end of the table. In a good performance, of course, against Arsenal when we went to the city ground and we had to really bide our time before we started uh, to get the lead and, and eventually claim those three points. But he said the 21-year-old to be a player of interest to Arsenal. So one that's intriguing, a 21-year-old Premier League experienced player already uh, could be available in that um, during that summer transfer window would be an interesting depth option, of course, to add to Arsenal's squad moving forwards. Is he good enough? Well, he's had a good season, despite the fact he's playing in a team, of course, that uh, isn't exactly the most competitive in the world um, and is constantly facing uh, periods of, of without the ball. So he's constant a threat. And he's a left-footed player, interestingly, as well. So if Kivior is seen as more of a left-back option for Arsenal now moving forwards, maybe Murillo is being seen as that potential backup to Gabriel. For me, I think if Arsenal are to sign a defender, I thought it would be more of a right-footed player. But it's interesting to see that Arsenal are said to be uh, impressed by the Nottingham Forest map. Uh, moving to the striker position, and as we discussed, me and Harry on yesterday's show, Victor Gorkarez featuring very heavily and prominently amongst the discussions at the moment. And the Portuguese media are suggesting that Arsenal are now leading the race for Victor Goyokarez. And not only that, but there's even suggestions that Arsenal would be willing to activate the Swedish internationals release clause. That release clause, as we know, is 100 million euros. But according to Correa da Mania, uh, they are suggesting that Arsenal would indeed be willing to activate that. It amounts to around 85 million pounds. Other reports have suggested, as I say already, that Arsenal are indeed leading the race for Goyo Carez, and they see him potentially as a key or maybe even their prime striker target. This is a story that we expect to continue to develop and unfold as we get closer to the summer and into it as well. And you can be sure that we'll be bringing you all the updates on it. And when we reach the end of the season and Arsenal will get very close to announcing any potential signings, like potentially Goyo Carez, We'll be doing our tactical breakdowns. We'll be getting on some experts to get them explaining what and how he has impressed so far during the season. We'll be getting all of our statistical analysis out as well. So don't you worry, I'll be going in plenty of detail on all the players that Arsenal are linked to, however many there are during that summer transfer window. So make sure that you look out for that one. But you should also look out for the remaining tickets, of course, that are available to win a signed and framed William Saliba shirt. There is now less than a week to go on this competition. There is also less than 100 tickets, I believe, available. So best of luck to everybody that's already got involved in the competition. Thank you to all of those that have already bought tickets as well. If you haven't done so already, the link is down in today's YouTube video description. Um, so I look forward to seeing and hopefully getting messaged by plenty of you letting me know uh, you've had some success with either big prize or some of the instant win prizes that are involved in this competition as well. Right, let's go to part two and your questions right after this. Mm -hmm. 
So, yeah, as I mentioned at the start of the show, a massive thank you to everybody that's helped us to reach five, uh, well, 55,000 subscribers on the channel. It means a lot. Um, and so thank you for that. I maintain always that that we have the best community on the platform. And seeing as I've been able to meet so many of you now in person, I know that to be true, not only across the internet waves either. Um, thank you for continuing to help it grow. Thank you to all those who have recently joined us and recently become a part of this family. So many messages of people saying they've only found this channel in the last couple of months or so. And I see that there's plenty of people now that tune in on on Twitter as well. Twitter's really pushing the... Uh, the streams, there's over 200 of you there. There's over 800 of you listening on YouTube, over 1,000 of you all together live, which is great. If you do listen on, on, on Twitter, though, and you want to join and get more involved with the channel every single morning, I do recommend hopping over to YouTube so you can join us in the chat box and ask questions because that's what we do, as always, in part two. Please make sure you drop a like and help us to get to that 1K every day target. Um, okay, uh, let's go to Damien. says, do you think... Arsenal will wait until after the 30th of June to sign players due to profit and sustainability regulations. Potentially. Definitely a chance that might happen because of how the accounting years work and things like that. But what I would say, Damien, is there's nothing stopping them agreeing transfers as long as they are registered and kind of fully completed after that June 30th. So negotiations can still happen. Agreements can still happen. Um, but as long as we can kind of see those agreements and those all of those ratified after june 30 if it should be fine uh, louis says what's your like goal for the emirates capacity what number is that you're going for if there's a different figure it's the subscriber count louis for this season we've got fifty five thousand. the emirates stadium capacity is is just over sixty thousand. uh the emirates capacity at arsenal is um, let's see. Uh, bum, 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 bum. why it's 60,704 is, is our target of subs this year. It's going to be a real big challenge to get another 5,000 plus subs this year. But if we can do it, especially over the summer months, we often get quite a big boost of people discovering the channel during the transfer window. But uh, that is the aim, that is what we're trying to do. So let's uh. Let's see if it's even possible. Um, but thank you to all of those that are already part of this TGT family. Um, Reese says, is the Saka source already out? Yes, it is, Reese. It is out. So this is obviously news that Bakai Saka has joined up with uh, the restaurant Nando's uh, to produce his own source. He's a player, of course, and a person that had been attending Nando's restaurants all through his childhood. It's certainly a restaurant that is synonymous with my own childhood um had been going there since i was i was very young and continued to do so i claim that it has the best chocolate cake of any cake you wouldn't think so it being a chicken shop but i trust me if you have not had the nando's chocolate cake then you need uh, this isn't an ad by the way i'm not sponsored uh, nando's you're more than welcome to sponsor us if you like but the nando's chocolate cake oh my goodness me bit of cream on there oh dearie me it's not good for a diet. It's it's not at all. But uh, oh, find me a better chocolate cake. I challenge you to. I really do. And you wouldn't again. You would think I'm crazy. You would think I'm mad. But it is. It just is. One year because I have the best wife in the world. One year, my birthday cake was a whole Nando's chocolate cake. She had to go to some warehouse in Essex, I think it was, to pick it up. It had been like frozen. It was already segmented into all the different slices. And yeah, had a Nando's birthday cake it wasn't that but she bought an entire one all the slices from a warehouse uh, where they keep all of the produce for nando's it's quite the story um but it shows you i married very very well indeed but yes saka has joined up with nando's uh they are not selling the sauce yet if it goes well this promotion they probably will but at the moment as far as i'm aware they're not selling it that hasn't stopped though plenty of people online i see getting their hands on it outside of the restaurants through I assume illegitimate means. Uh, Tizer says, hey, Tom, I know you done a show yesterday rating potential targets, but if you do a show where, um, if you would do a show where you and friends pick players that you've heard of and think would do a good job, which haven't been reported, uh, like Willie Orban, uh, says Tizer. So I guess that would kind of be a, a dream summer window scenario with like players that we'd like to sign. Definitely. Um we could do it. Jordan says the way Tom keeps saying it's co it's called that. So I know you think I'm mispronouncing it. It's called Choc a Lot Cake. 
So even though it's chocolate cake, it's chocolate is the name of the actual cake. So I'm not going mad, Jordan. I'm not mispronouncing it. That's just what it's called. Uh, it's choc hyphen a hyphen lots. That is how it's actually named. Uh, Andy says, whilst the accounts are published, that's released in June, the figures are already declared to the football authorities. I still think, Andy, there is something to be said about the 30th of June because I remember last year, Chelsea were waiting until that date to do something. Um, so it's worth, Worth just checking up on that one. I'm not. I'm not saying you're, you're 100 wrong. I'm not a financial expert, but I'm pretty sure there is something to be said about the 30th of June deadline. Uh, Luca says, "Question: Do you think Goyocaros is the answer to Arsenal because he may have scored 30 goals in the Portuguese league? Um, but I feel there are better centre forwards because the Premier League is is harder and more physical. I mean, he's already played in the Championship, which is ardu- arguably an even more physical league. If you've ever played or seen the football in the Championship, it's probably the most competitive league." In the world, I put an argument towards. I think the championship is probably the most competitive. If you think about all the ex-Premier League teams that have dropped into that league and are now playing 48 games or 46 games across a season trying to get back to the Premier League, the championship is by far the most tenacious, um, competitive and kind of grindy league, I think. Uh, in the world. And so he's already scored plenty of goals there. He's now gone to arguably a tougher league in terms of the quality level of players and is scoring at a ridiculous rate. 50 goal contributions this season already uh, across all competitions. So that's in Europe as well. It's worth pointing out. Uh, he's been stunningly good. Stunningly good. So yeah, he uh, and if you look at him, you know he's going to be able to handle the physical side of things. He's an absolute beast. Uh, Nail says Tom from the teams at the moment in promotion positions and championship and relegation from the Premier League. Which players stand out to you, and who do you think would be moving to a higher table club as well? So I mean, players from the Championship at the moment going up at the moment. We've got of course Ipswich and Leicester are the main two. You've then got I think Southampton. Very much up there at the top of the table with Leeds United. Uh, also in the mix. I think they're top currently, actually. Um, West Brom, Norwich, also fighting for those playoff places with Hull and Coventry. Uh, in terms of players in the championship, I'm not sure there's too many that stand out for me. I haven't watched enough, really, of them to to to, to be able to start throwing names out. Steffi Mavadidi, of course, who used to play for Arsenal, has had a very good season for, for Leicester, but he's more of a left-sided player. And I think we need more of a right-sided player. In terms of the, the teams that could be going down this season from the Premier League, of course, there's a number of teams that uh, could still face the drop. You've got Everton, Luton, Nottingham Forest, Burnley, Sheffield United, Brentford still down there, of course. Crystal Palace aren't yet out of the mire either. Uh, Marillo, of course, already been linked with at Forest. Morgan Gibbs-White, a very impressive player. I do like him. How does he fit into the Arsenal team, though? I'm not so sure on that one. Luton Town, have the Luton got any players? Adebayo has been fantastic for them this season, currently out injured or still injured at the moment as well. Again, I'm not sure. We've got the player in Sambi Lokonga that's really stood out for them this season. So, yeah, I think there's scope for some, but not really any, any key players at all. Uh, Lucas says, Victor Ozimen is my number one striker. He's, his form has dipped considerably this season. You know, you look at him compared to last season, his form has, has gone down considerably. And his price tag of 130 million euro release clause, I just can't see that being um, worth paying at all. Agurka has certainly been in far better form um, than than Ozimen. So one to, uh, one to keep an eye on. I don't know who it will be. It seems Gorka Rez is the favourite at the moment. Um, but we'll, of course, keep everyone updated on how that story develops. Um, Benny says, any clubs wanting to avoid a points deduction must balance their books by June 30th, even if that means selling their top assets on the cheap. Um, so there you go. Uh, I guess maybe that's that's more of an indication about what clubs need to do from a PSR perspective. Uh, Skywalker says, good morning, Tom. Will there be a surprise signing like Kivy or perhaps not being reported. There's always a chance, mate. Always a chance that something will come out of surprise. I mean, the Kai Havertz deal came out of nowhere, really. It was, it emerged. It was negotiated. We had bids go in in the space of like two to three weeks. It came out of nowhere and then it was done. There wasn't any build up to Havertz across the course of like January to June. It was just kind of emerged in the summer and, and then it happened. I remember being at the office actually when it first got reported that Arsenal had placed a bid for Havertz. So, it, that was a, a pretty quick one. So, yeah, there's always a chance, mate, that we'll see a bit of a surprise deal pop up. So keep your eyes peeled across the summer. Of course, as I say, we'll be across it all. And he says, do you think we will go for Kimmich? 
I mean, it depends on his price tag, I think. I think if, if you can get Kimmich for a very good price, I think it's an absolute no-brainer. I think if you can get Kimmich for less than 20, if you can get him for less than 20, you've done an amazing job. If you can get him for less than 30, I still think I'd be open to that. Brilliant world-class player, pushes the needle in two positions for me and would add great depth uh, and quality and world-class ability and experience to this team. So, yeah, people talk about his age isn't the right age, but I'm sorry, if you get him for the right price, you've got a player there that's going to give you three, four years of really good level football. And people said the same about Jorginho, too old. But look at what Jorginho has done and how he has helped us in the short term as well. Kimmich is a no-brainer, I think, for me, if you can get that deal done. Uh, Matt says, hey, what's happened to Rob Holding? Not played too much, as he, at all? If anything, I don't think he even, has he even played a Premier League minute for Crystal Palace. Arsenal got around, I think the fee was something between three and a half to four million pounds total, including add-ons, although I don't see those add-ons necessarily getting activated at the moment, it seems. But yeah, Rob Holding's career... Not gone too well since moving to South London. Uh, Shane says, has Charles Sago Jr. got a look in with Swansea yet? I know I saw that he didn't get any minutes in their derby game. Also, has Patino's form dipped for them as he only came on in the 90th minute? Yeah, Patino has really fallen off uh, in terms of his opportunities for Swansea. Sago Jr. was making some appearances from the bench, I noticed, but he's it's not been like, like, like it's not been like he's been getting loads. In fact, looking recently he's not been in the squad for the last four games and he was on the bench for the last two games previous to that so it doesn't seem like those loans for Sago Jr. or um or Patino have gone down particularly well anymore which is obviously a, a frustration uh, Louis says what's your thoughts on Arsenal becoming a multi-club model and if so what leagues would you look at absolutely Arsenal should be looking at uh joining this multi-club model system it is a thing that every club is looking to try and do. Man City have done it very successfully, the City Football Group. Chelsea are now looking to do it, of course, with their merger, or not merger, but they acquired a, a huge stake in, in Strasbourg. We know clubs like Brighton, clubs like Sheffield United have got clubs that they have got partnerships with. Arsenal should absolutely be looking to do this. In terms of leagues, it's it's really quite simple in terms of you know wanting to build a big network. So it could be France, it could be Spain, Portugal, Germany, Belgium. South American sides, Brazil, Argentina, even into some of the other nations like Uruguay and Chile, etc., are looking for some of those. So uh, absolutely, Arsenal should be looking for a multi-club model strategy, in my opinion, and I think it's something that they need to look to try and improve in the infrastructure of the, the club's network. Um, let's go to uh, Nelson. I saw the news on Timber. It's hoped that he will be available after the international break. Not sure if you've discussed it yet. Uh, can we all pray that he is he can see out the rest of the season. The hope is that he will see out the rest of the season. The hope is that we can get him integrated into the squad, into the group, and get him playing minutes as soon as possible. It's a massive boost of a player of that quality. It's £38 million worth of player coming into the team for the last 10 to 15 games of the season, however many we can have left with the Champions League, of course, as well. If you can get him fit, if you can get him match fit and ready and at top form and playing to his best of his abilities, you've got an amazing player that Arsenal have at their disposal. So, yeah, let's let's see what happens with Jury and Timber. Can't wait. Really can't wait to see him. Um, Nick says, Tom, are you covering the Euros for Football London? Getting any nice trips to Germany? No, um, we'll be covering it from here. Although that said, I am going to the England-Brazil game this week and covering that for, the, uh, for Football London. I'm really frustrated, though, because all the Arsenal-Brazil players have now aren't in the squad. So there was kind of a hope that Martinelli and Gabriel and Jesus would, you know, be getting some time. But it'll be Ramsdale and Saka and, uh, and Rice that I'll be focused on from an Arsenal point of view. Of course, we do cover Spurs and Chelsea, so I'll be looking at some of those players as well and how they're going to be getting on. So that's uh, that's one to keep an eye on. Uh, oh, what's happened there? For some reason, my ad block has gone weird. Um, Benny says, good call, Tom, on the timber estimation. Uh, you said March all along. Um, well, I, I said March because that was the timeline of those types of injuries that's why i'd always been told that's what i've been briefed seven to nine months is what you can expect from a injury of that type and so it was always going to be march at the earliest and may at the latest maybe not the latest because you can have setbacks but march was always going to be that earliest return point you know there were so many claims that it was going to be some said january some said february which still even then i thought wow that's optimistic you really are throwing yourself on the line for an injury. Injuries are the worst thing that you can try and report on because they're so changing. They're so, um, what's the word? Um, 
concealed, protected. They're things that, like transfers, you can usually get some really good lines out of and things like that. But injuries, especially with Arsenal, the club like keeping things close to their chest on that that fact. Um, so suggestions that he'd be returning to training like and, and like out on the field in terms of full training in January are always going to be wider the mark. He's returned to training now, you know, and, and did so and had been doing plenty of group work in February, the time I reported that. There were suggestions that he'd return to full training at the start of February. That wasn't the case from what I heard. Uh, and it took a little bit to, to build up to that. Of course, we saw him in those sessions at the Emirates. He was just doing some group work and doing still some stuff on his own. Until he's not doing that solo work, he's still technically not considered in full training. So he's now like integrated into the group. He's doing plenty with them. So it's a matter of time until we see him back. Will he be in the squad for the City game? I'd be surprised. Um, but there's always a chance, I guess. We could be player behind closed door friendly, maybe. Maybe we will. Um, obviously, there's a lot of players that now go away on their international duty, but could we still play some without that? I guess there's a possibility that we could. So one to keep an eye on. Uh, Andy says, Kimmich is thought to be around the 52 million. I don't think he'll cost that much, Andy, at all. You know, he's 29 years of age. He's got a year left on his contract. Unless there's a lot of teams that come in for him, I think they'll struggle to get that amount of money. I really, really do. Uh, and says, is it the best to leave Timber out until the se end of the season uh, so we can get the best Timber back? It's the right decision depending upon how the physios see him. If he's ready and back, you can play him. I know what you're saying in terms of giving him even more time to rest and recover. I understand that. And I absolutely don't want to see him rushed back and I don't want to see him come back prematurely. But if there is... The experts in the field believe that he is coming back and he is ready and he feels that he is ready too. And you've got all of these things saying yes and you're giving the green light. There's no point in delaying it just because you're concerned. So, yeah, I, I think that it is most likely that, you know, we will see him this season and that will be the right decision. Um, an injury could happen again. There's always kind of muscular injuries that can be linked with the return from those big layoffs. Um, so it wouldn't be surprising if he missed a few games because of a muscular problem. Um, but yeah, it's just one to keep an eye on, but we should bring him back and there's still a chance he might re-injure something else, but that would happen no matter when he came back. Um, ben says, uh, once again, in terms of ability, how do you think Patino relates to his peers like Manu and Angelo? Uh, Angelo's a tricky one because I've not really seen anything of him. Manu, though, of course, already starting for... Um, Manchester United now in the England national team senior level I can't help but think he actually played that he could have gotten a call up I mean, it's not a case of him like if he had actually played he would have got a call up like if he's not deemed good enough he's not deemed good enough he's gone on loan he's not been able to break into the Swansea team on a regular occasion in the second half of the season so sadly those factors have combined and of course there could be things that I'm not aware of then you always have to take that into account but at the moment, it's looking very, very difficult for Patino to break into that that Arsenal squad for next season. And I think a, a deal to try and sell him in the summer will probably uh, materialise. He's still very talented. There's a player there for sure. There is absolutely. I mean, someone could come in, give him minutes and give him time and patience and they might find a stunningly good footballer. I have no doubt that there's, there's talent there. But I, I've just got serious doubts about whether or not it would be at Arsenal. Um, Temi says, Ramsey looked so bad after his return from injury. I feel like Arsenal are a bit too expectant of him. I don't know about Arsenal, Temi. Arsenal fans, maybe, um, but certainly not Arsenal. There's a lot of excitement about him at the club, but that was the case when he signed. So, obviously, that's still going to exist now. Um, but I don't think there is a like a like there's too much expectance from Arsenal, but maybe there is from fans. Uh, and he says, I still think we need a centre-back cover for Erdegaard and a striker in the summer. Who would you buy if you could only get three players? Um, well, probably a goalkeeper because I think Ramsdale is going to move on I think, and we have to sign a goalkeeper in that case. Um, but yes, a forwards, I, I still think a centre midfielder is is big. I don't think cover for Erdegaard is necessarily a, a real big need. We've got Smith Rowe still here at the moment. We've got Vieira, of course, still here at the moment. I don't think you're going to sign a player that's going to give you too much more than those. Um, so therefore I think, and you've got Kai Havertz also that can play that position if you, if you needed him to Trossard arguably could also. So yeah, I don't see that as a necessity defensive midfield, a forward and a goalkeeper. If Ramsdale leaves, I think you need to add a fourth and say we need a defender as well. Um, I think four signings in the summer would be a good addition. Um, maybe five, if you can get a forward and a winger, um, 
but yeah, otherwise you might be pushing it a little bit. It depend on what obviously we do outgoings wise as well as to how we can improve the team from an incoming perspective. Um, Steve says, has Raya earned a song? Absolutely he has, yes. Uh, and says, I think we should congratulate Edu. Just seeing that all of our starting 11 are now on long-term contracts. Well done. Absolutely. You know, every single player that we've got in that first 11 is, of course, um, in a position where soon we're not going to need to worry about new contracts or signing new deals. And um, yeah, keep an eye on things because it's it's certainly not done from that perspective either with the squad. Uh, Drunk Saras says, is Branthwaite too expensive for a centre-back? It depends how much he costs. If he's like 50 million plus, then I'd say yes. Um, otherwise, if you're going to get him for 30 to 40, then maybe not. He's a good, talented player. I just don't know if I'd pay that huge fee for him. Um Drunk Saras says, and says here, is Zubamendi no longer the first choice DM? I don't know. Uh, I've not really heard of any other defensive midfielder really being talked about bar Kimmich. So, and that's only really coming from the players' side, not necessarily Arsenal's side. So, again, it's it's difficult to know. I think Zubamendi is still very much liked by Arsenal. Um, Nell says, Southgate managing United would be jokes, but then we would need to find a new home for not living rent-free in Eric Ten Hag's head. Yes, this comes from a story yesterday that claimed that um, the Manchester United new owner would like to put Southgate in charge. I hope that happens. Oh my, I hope it happens. That would be amazing. Amazing if that happens. Please. I think it's Ratcliffe, if you're listening, Southgate's an unbelievable coach. I think he could take Manchester United to world-class levels and win them Champions League. So if, if it were me, oh, without doubt, if I was in charge of Manchester United, I'd be bringing in Southgate tomorrow tomorrow please do it please i implore you um and with that we'll bring an end to this morning's show there's over a thousand of you listening on youtube thank you so much for the kind support that you always give to the channel it is hugely appreciated and massively humbling as i mentioned already we hit fifty-five thousand subs we continue on our journey on our aim to try and reach the emirate stadium capacity by the end of the year it's going to be a hell of a challenge um, to try and get 5,000 more subs before the end of the season, before the end of the year, sorry. Um, but that is the aim. That is the plan. 60,706. Can we reach it before the end of 2024? Let's wait and see. Thank you for those that have already dropped a like on the video. If you haven't done so, please do. Thank you for all of those listening on Catch Up as well. Please leave your comments of anything you've talked about or want to talk about in the comment section. I try to reply to as many as I can and read through all of them. So thank you for that. And I'll be back this evening, 5 o'clock UK time, with DG Deluded Guna to have a chat about Arsenal and a topic of our choice. So I look forward to that. See you soon. Have a fantastic Wednesday. Stay safe, happy, well, and respectful. And as always, up the Arsenal.